Master Ado, Amber! <laughs> My name is Amber Maya Co. Maya, named after Maya Angelou. Uh, Maya actually, in most languages in the world, means vision or sight. So my name means uh, gift of sight or gift of vision. So hopefully, I can bring a little bit of that gift to share with you guys here today. I did psychological operations in the army. Um, so I need to go up a louder because of the fans. I did psychological operations in the army, and the psyop mantra is perception is reality. So a lot of what I want to talk about today is how you perceive yourself and how you perceive yourself affecting how others perceive you. So, sorry, I'm trying to shift some of this a little bit. So how we can use props, be it anything in your daily life or anything you would like in your daily life, to help change how you think and feel about yourself. All right, so as I've discussed a little bit, I've been going through a bit of a transition, and I very much identified the chain on the elephant as a chain of a number of different things uh, holding me back. Um, I was an abused child, which had a lot of impact on, on my social withdrawal from a lot of different things. And I was deaf from the ages of about 9 to 12, which again made it very difficult for me to, to develop and interact. And I became amazing um, <laughs> when my speech coach in early middle school um, challenged me, chicken dared me, to join theater. Um, so that I could go from the, oh my god, I'm going to stutter, I'm going to, you know, whatever, speech therapist, to getting up in front of crowds of people to embarrass my ass off repeatedly. Um, and overcompensate I did. Um, and that helped push me, push me quite a bit, but I had a major turning point when I was probably about 17, when I saw her purple boots in a store, Commander Salamander in Georgetown, they were having a 75% off sale, handmade Spanish purple boots, and these aren't the boots, but helping me get that idea. I, I wasn't the person that would wear those purple boots, but I wanted to be that person. You know, they were just, the sale was too good, you know, and I'm like, I have no idea who would wear those, but I'm buying them, and I'm wearing them next week. Mm -hmm. uh, and become the person who wore those boots, I did. Um, a little bit edgier than those, but you, you get the idea. So thinking of that, um, looking back at, well actually skipping, skipping paces a little bit, if everybody would close their eyes for just a minute and think about that one thing that you know makes you feel better than anything in the world. Some of the ladies may be a nice sexy pair of heels, or when you go out on that date, maybe that, you know, little extra lacy pair of underwear, you know, that, that gives you that extra emotional oomph. You know, for a guy, maybe it's a, it's a doing an extra few push-ups or that, that really nice flattering shirt you wear before you go out. You know, and then focus on that as something, well, why don't you wear those heels more often? Or why don't you wear that shirt more often? And then come back slowly to reality with that image stuck in your head of, well, why don't I? And we'll be coming back to that of, well, why don't you? Um, actually... Tish, if you could share a story with us. I overheard earlier at lunch yesterday a story that I really thought touched me and drove, drove a lot home for me. If you'd share that story with the hospitals. Uh, when I was sick and going through treatment and really not feeling very good, one of my good friends said to me, you know, on your, on your very worst days when you know, you're on your knees and just trying to get through a shower, um, you know, get out of the shower, dry your hair, put on some makeup, and get dressed. And she said, I guarantee your day will get better. You know, it may not be hugely better, but it will be better. It will be better. And it was. And it was probably the best piece of advice I got. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a day that I did it that I didn't feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the guys may not identify with that so much, but I think a lot of the women probably will. You know, those days, putting on your armor or your mask, or however you want to dress it, sometimes you need that little bit extra just to get through the day. You know, if it's taking a shower in a difficult time, or if it's meeting that boss, you need that extra that extra power. So, you know, if it's your purple heels, it's your makeup, it's whatever it may be. For the guys, I was talking with Jeff, and sorry he couldn't be here, but we were talking a bit about body armor, you know, and how even some of the, the swap guys, the coming, coming back to that world, that it's, they may have not remembered a lot of it, but as soon as you get the weight of that body on, your chest rolls back, you, you puff up, you, you physically remember that. And it helps make you be the man you need to be to win those battles. 
um, had asked uh, Rob, actually, Rob, what did you say about your uniform the other night? How do you feel when you put that uniform on and when you take it off? You become a different person. You have to put on a certain persona that would fit that, that mold. So, yeah, I would agree with you. And how do you feel when you take that uniform off and say, put on a nice suit? <sighs> It's a big sigh of relief, yes. Wow. Especially being polyester. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Go for polyester. So definitely just realizing how these things can, uh, can affect us, can impact us, and how changing our behavior and how we feel changes our nonverbal cues, how we impact and uh, interact with others, and how then their interactions impact and affect us. So how does your favorite pumps or your, your uniform, whatever that object was you envisioned when you closed your eyes and said, God, I really need to wear that more. I, I want to be more of that person. Or maybe taking a uniform off. I want to be less of that person. How does this prop or this tangible object affect your demeanor? Do you fake it until you make it? And if so, is that, is that something that's gotten you through? Or is that maybe a chain you don't need anymore? Is that, is that uniform something that's held you up a long time? Maybe you don't need anymore. You're just ready to take it off. Um, and if so, how does this affect how other people interact with you? You know, what, what nonverbal cues are you giving, you know, when you put that uniform on, or those, those I'm the boss today heels, that you're maybe not eliciting otherwise? And have you thought of using these things to your benefit? Maybe getting a little creative. This, Yes, it's really nice to have that, that extra fallback, but if you play with it a little bit, you can get really creative, and that's what we want to push you to do today. One thing I used to do when I rack um, is uh, I hitchhiked around Iraq without any uh, weapons or anything of that nature with, on average, about a quarter of a million dollars in cash. Uh, this is a $10,000 bundle, and everybody wants to touch it. You know, the running joke is, aha, so how much are you worth today? Like, wouldn't you like to know? Get me to where I'm going safely and I might tell you. Um, so very much, if it was just a smile or, or whatever disarming in, I could go to, could I please hitch a ride with you, um, became very important. And especially in this type of environment, you may have noticed how I can, you know, default to, you know, one of the boys. Um, and actually that was, that was the impetus for me wearing the dress earlier today. And I had intended to be presenting it as well. But you may have noticed just in my own persona how greatly I changed by changing that outfit. You know, because I don't normally do this very often when I'm in a dress. It's just not who I'm feeling, who I am that day. And uh, being able to instantly build a rapport, instantly connect, and get people to want to help me, to inconvenience not only themselves, but their entire convoy troop, to save my life. I mean, I, I think a pretty little girl in Iraq probably gets killed for a lot less than a quarter of a million dollars USD cash. Um, regularly. So literally, to save my life. How do I get them to want to put themselves out of the way to help me? Um, and as you guys have all probably met, Basil. Um, Basil, the British Bulldog, um, both the symbol for the Marines, but more importantly, my birthday, my birthday gift uh, for my 30th birthday from a friend. Um, I was working through a store and he just had a very tactile, reassuring <sighs> touch. You know, it's just, I, I recommend if you guys haven't felt him, he's, he's very calming. So he's traveled a number of different countries with me and always been a great opener, a great, you know, support to me to make me feel a little bit more stable and grounded and confident and a great opener for other people. Um, C-130, <coughs> very interesting. Hot, hot tin cans. If you guys, raise your hand if you're uncomfortable in this room right now. Imagine being in a soda can with no ventilation and 150 <coughs> degree heat. Trust me, it gets, it gets a lot more uncomfortable. Helicopter, convoy, continue. Um, but no matter where I went, some of the badass guys are the badass. You get British SAS, you get a medic, who are normally pretty tough ass guys, even a gunner, guys that are normally not really the approachable types. And they're all smiling. They all pretty much desensitize and interact with the, uh, excuse me, ma'am, I don't think he's manifested. I'm not sure if we're allowed to have animals on the plane. <laughs> you know? It, it's a very instant connection that definitely worked in my favor and made me feel much better about the situation. And uh, Jeff brought up, well, I'm sure being a cute girl in Iraq didn't hurt. No, I'm sure it didn't. However, the C-130, when uh, the friend that took this photo, coincidentally, that's how we met, 
was a gentleman who brought two of his own, mm -hmm. one from each of his children, mm -hmm. that uh, kept him connected and kept him grounded, and was also very connecting for him. So be it male, female, whatever, it's all very grounding, connecting, reach back to our own childhood that we want, but, but an unusual warm and fuzzy we get in a particularly nice place. Uh, this, interesting enough, the co-pilot of a C-130, same day we were taking fire was very surprised and refreshingly pleased because it made me feel a lot calmer than he's smiling right after playing with my, my little stuffed animal. And this is the uh, puke train in the back. I was fortunate enough to be in the front with the pilots, but this is when you're, you're evasive fire, you're moving all around and one guy goes and then they all go right in your helmet. So this was a very stressful day, but I love his smile. Definitely driving home next. Um, so even when I'm about as badass as I can get, you know, the animal out front softens, even me. And traveling as I do, it's, it's just always a nice grounder, a positive that affects not only me and everyone else. Sorry. Sorry. And it gets everybody to want to help and bring you together. It brings them together just sort of hanging out and saying, how do I feel better about myself? How do they feel better about me because of it? So couple of final thoughts that I'd like you guys to be working on is what would be an empowering object for you? Your heels, your, your suit, taking off your uniform, what is it you could do more of to be more that person you want to be? Is it a lucky charm? It's not too far from a rabbit's foot if that's the way you want to think of things. And can you bond with something that will disarm, connect, and either soften or strengthen yourself? Be more of that person you want to be. And push to promote characteristics that you want to project and elicit. If people are treating you a certain way, how can you change that? What can you do to bring something better into your life? And to remember that you are the center of your own universe. Yes, my world does revolve around me. Not just this moment, but every day. And if there's something I don't like in my world, then it's my responsibility to change it. Thank you. And I thank you.